Holger, jetzt hört man dich. Jetzt jetzt hört man mich. Ach, das Scheiße. ist Holger Klein. Guten Tag. Auf Wiederhören. Ach, jetzt muss ich hier... Ja, ja, da machst du jetzt. Du oh. hast eine Stunde 40, nicht länger. Ich komme dann Dankeschön. auf die Bühne und mache richtig Ärger. Ich setze mich jetzt einfach mal an den Tisch, weil äh, ich der Einzige bin... All right, I'm just gonna sit down here because I'm the one person to not say that much during this event. This year we thought we're gonna have this sort of like PowerPoint karaoke that we did the last few years. We're gonna replace it with something new. And so I don't have one single slide to show you. We'll see. So we've replaced uh, the karaoke with the decentralized UN review. So instead of uh, as a monologue or as uh, two or three people up on stage uh, to talk about all the stuff that has happened, we're going to try to have the um, regional um, clubs to come up here, the AirFAS, and to uh, give a brief overview in five to ten minutes about what happened last year. Yeah, and i probably not going to need much of an introduction. Uh, yeah, oh, so you, you've brought a dog into the audience. That's nice. Um, yeah, we're going to start now. Um, I'm going to just tell you who's going to come up on stage and then let them talk, the speakers. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, there's good news and bad news, like always, and we're going to start with bad news because uh, one of us died this year. Um, and we'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, Pananun from uh, Digital Courage. Um, um, the person who died, he's called Jimmy Schulz, and um, yeah, now he's going to talk about him. Ich höre keinen Ton. Das hat. Nein, es ist auch Begriff. Komm, wir fangen noch mal an. Audio issues. Ozaft ist ist nicht mehr nur der Ausspruch nach dem Anstechen eines Bierfasses. Nein, es ist auch Begriff und Hashtag der ganzen Diskussion. Um, Ozapt is, is uh, not something you say when you drink beer, but it's also become uh, this groundbreaking terminology in this debate. And we need to uh, thank the uh, Chaos Computer Club um, for, this, uh, for these uh, 20 pages of analyses. And I recommend all of you to read that at home. I recommend everyone in this house to read this document and he was serious about that because he was enraged that his colleagues in the uh, German parliament didn't want to hear about digitalization. Uh, everywhere was just like, not my department, you do you and I don't want to deal with this. And in the parliament he um, joined Doro Bear and ja Lars Klingbeil um, to have uh, crypto parties uh, for the German parliament. And with Jimmy Schulz this wasn't some sort of superficial attitude. So maybe you've seen um, on his clothes there was a sticker from the C-Base, a uh, hacker space in Berlin. Um, this was one of he, his base stations uh, when he was dealing with um, uh, politics in Germany's capital. And he was always in the uh, smoking lounge. Um, when it comes to beer and cigarettes, I'm a communist. That was what he always used to say, and this has been transmitted through uh, across all par party lines. And yes, so uh, digital policies that were non-existent or were so lacking in quality, um, that was what, what he fought against. And that's why he went into politics. He wanted to participate. He didn't want to talk, talk, talk. He wanted to improve politics. He wanted to improve digital politics. And the uh, German Liberal Party's um, yearly meeting, he, I talked to him back then, and in this super election year, quote unquote, um, back then uh, we still had a pirate party in Germany, 
um, yeah, we, we try to sort of infiltrate the uh, Liberal Party, the FDP, and um, had this little stand uh, where we raged against um, data retention. Um, yeah, and uh, he was active in uh, Munich's uh, in a committee against data retention. And he showed us a paper that he wanted to uh, um, hand in to the uh, party council on um, saying that data retention should not happen anymore if the German federal court um, federal constitutional court would uh, say it was unconstitutional. And so I said, well, you know, isn't this just a matter of semiotics? Uh, couldn't we just say it like that? And then, uh, yeah, he, he just jumped and ran and changed uh, his his phrasing and then uh, the motion passed actually and uh, then we had a new coalition in Germany and uh, data retention was no more thanks to the uh, Liberal Party and his engagement and then when he joined the uh, German Parliament he was a very young member of Parliament by comparison and he was one of the first who had an iPad in Parliament and so he was the first person in German Parliament to uh, speak and uh, have his notes in digital form in front of him on a screen. Um, after that he received a letter from um, uh, a call to order afterwards for this behavior. Oh, and we're still missing audio from the video. All right. This time I brought paper. Yeah, so this was uh, his next speech after the call to order. And after the summer break, it was decided that iPads would be allowed in German Parliament. Uh, and so Jimmy was really groundbreaking in that role. And uh, by the way, his iPad from back then is now part of the permanent collection of the um, Museum of German History in Bonn. Yeah, I don't have much time here, so I just want to say, you know, you, you, you start at the bottom, right? Uh, to um, You do like this... Um, low work and you try to get people to elect you and this really isn't an easy uh, an easy job and Jimmy he had this wonderful ability to not be mad at people who um, ignore and uh, say slurs about people who join political parties especially the uh, liberal party the FDP and so this ability really I would have liked to have that when Jimmy had me join this uh, commission on uh, digital society um, and he he had warned me and before that uh, beforehand that I would you know become harassed and I was naively I thought um, that would not happen and yeah so in this um, working group um, uh, this, uh, by the way, is a symbol uh, of how annoyed he was sometimes, so, uh, where he had to, uh, because of measures of the coalition, he had to vote against his principles when it comes to uh, freedom online. And he looked at me and uh, put his hand against his head and just lowered his head and raised his other hand and um, doing so he voted pro um, limits online yeah so politics isn't easy and it's always uh, that way when and we see that um, on stage and um, off the stage here at congress 
Um, two years ago, Jimmy didn't make it to Congress, and he told me he had become gravely ill. And he said, yeah, you, you, you know, he stuck to his work. He kept on working because that, that made him happy. And so um, sometimes he also came to Berlin and hold, held speeches about um, the right to encrypt and he also smoked the first legal joint in Parliament. And then uh, in the evenings he came over to Seabase um, even while his energy levels sunk. And this year he gave an interview to a German magazine, Der Spiegel. And he said this wonderful sentence, it's okay for me to die. And this was really good to hear for people who want to continue working with him, um, continue working on this digital world, which certainly isn't that new to us anymore. Um, and for people who know what it feels like to have lost someone, I think this really reveals, this reminds us to, you know, go beyond superficialities, go beyond logos and claims and really um, take into consideration the... Um, Jimmy's art get how wonderful people can be. And so his work continued. He had the IGF come to Berlin, the Forum on Internet Governance. Um, and in his memory, um, members of parliament from 56 countries um, send a message to the uh, General Secretary of the UN about him. And I want to mention his family here, his children and his wife. Um, not all people here at the 36 C3 knew Jimmy, but many did. And I want to say to his family members that a lot of the people here will be with you. So goodbye, Jimmy. May the force be with you. Sorry, that was too soon. Um, one more thing. So not in Jimmy's life and not in German parliament, it's uh, serious business all the time. So sometimes when a uh, uh, member of parliament wants to start a speech, um, you, you get called at by other members. And so Manuel Höhler, one, one shouted, um, beer crate to Jimmy. And Jimmy asked, well, could it be a, a beer cat? A beer keg. Um, yeah, so Ozapt is, is not just something you say after you open a keg of beer. Padelun, thank you so much. And now here are my slides. Great. This is wonderful. I think we can continue in just a few seconds. And we're going to continue... With, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if you guys are interested, but I'm just going to tell you anyways, because I have a little bit of time to get a bridge here. I'm not even a member of the CCC. You can uh, scream boo now. Oh, nobody's interested in this. Told you that. <laughs> have we prepared something? Uh, we, we obviously do not uh, manage to uh, not do the bookkeeping. So we're going to uh, listen to the... Report the annual report that we have to do. And I asked him to uh, get me a membership application that I can uh, fill in um, while he does this report. And then um, I'm, I can uh, just tell him. Yes, moin. Good morning. Do you want to maybe like pass us a microphone? Uh, do you have an application for me? I just heard that. I mean, you, do you, I had to print that really quickly. But how much does it cost, actually? Are you still a student? Uh, only for uh, public transport tickets and for health insurance reasons. So in that case, it's 36 euros. Um, otherwise, it's 72. Amazon Prime is cheaper. You realize that, right? 
and they bring it to your doorstep. Well, if you don't pay, we're also going to send you mail. Well, I will fill this in. You guys do the year in review. Uh, Volker and Letty, you have five minutes, like Padalun just had. Wonderful. All right, so I am one of the people that collects the membership data and uh, governs it. This is our office in Hamburg, as we like to call it. This is in this small computer right next to the monitor. We have the database that's only offline. It never is connected to the Internet because security and so on. I admit this picture is not completely updated. This is an Intel Nook by now, and um, it is a lot more cluttered and a lot more chaotic. This was the picture taken upon moving in, but all right. Um, all right, so the data in this database, we looked, take, took another look at it, and we tried to find some interesting information in it. And um, I got the help of Letty for this, who made... Uh, like this beautiful analysis and got y interesting information for you guys. Well, first I thought you were joking because the um, membership number of uh, two th first number is 42,042, which was really, really funny. So at the moment we're at 7,900 members. Obviously we have a little jumps, usually right after Congress. But you can also see sometimes like numbers are are sw like shrinking and obviously like that happens because we have numbers that go back. So I was interested in what are the people, like what years were they born in, when do they join and how long do they stay. So 86 to 96, we have about 10 members and then all of a sudden we have these ginormous jumps like in 2008. We had about 400 people, and the year of Snowden of 2014, you kind of assumed that maybe people only joined and then would like unjoin or leave right after, but we still had about 900 after. And I mean, this year we're maybe lacking a little behind, but I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. There. Yes, still a few days to go. Okay, the last graphic that I brought with you is where do our members come that are part of the CCC and where are the stronger regions. So we have these regions um, split up by postal codes and obviously Berlin is uh, quite a strong, um, but also Hamburg. And then we have these kind of interesting cities such as Düsseldorf and Köln. Um, so, and also Karlsruhe and why Karlsruhe? Well, of course we have the GPN. Um, there's a lot of people there but also in Munich, and ever since we started being in Leipzig, also Leipzig has gotten a lot more stronger. Uh, you could potentially think that we have white spots, but no, this year we have a member from every postal region in Germany. Round of applause. We closed all white gaps. Do you have a question, Holger? No, no, you may continue. You have two more minutes. All right, so um, another statistic that we have not brought as a beautiful graphic is um, the number of males. It kind of exploded in the past few years because we have so many new members, so we tried to automate things and all this sort of stuff. And by now we have about 2019, we had roughly 33,000 emails that we sent out mainly automatic ones, kind of just what's going on. You have to pay your membership fees. Um, you, uh, We got your membership fees. But we also have about 4,500 emails that we received and uh, worked on and responded to. And you're going to have to do the math on this. That's a roughly about 90 emails per day. So you kind of, you know what I mean when I do this kind of calculation. And then we meet up once a week at the office, on average. Sometimes we do it more often, sometimes less often, like this week, for example. In one evening, in like two, three, four hours, depending on how much mails we got, we work on all of these emails. So we really are great if you inform yourself. And that we can like spend our time reading other things or eating pizza. So like there's certain things like read the ccc.de slash FAQ before you email in a question. And 
please do read the emails that we send out because a lot of times we actually have this case where we're like, hey, do you, when I have one, do I have to uh, pay for my next uh, membership fee? And there's a quote in the email where it's like, literally like this is a response to an email that was automatically sent which has a date of when your membership fee is due. So like this sort of stuff. Hey, we have a problem with your GPGQ. This is the error message that we got. Please send us a response. And then underneath that, there was like another notification of why that actually is happening. So what do you see? You get like, please like read the emails before you uh, respond. Be sensible about this. Right, what does it look like with your application? I'm done. I'm going to um, pay while um, doing bank transfers. It's beautiful. Great. This is the second club that I've ever joined. And who also wants to do that? There is a club table. Uh, it's up, showing up on the map at the CCL. You can go there, you can get a membership application if you want. You can also talk to the people, talk, discuss problems that you have with them, and you can like go to the info desk. Uh, you can pay your um, membership fee directly on the spot if you want. And you can, if you have other problems, you can obviously send emails and letters. That's it from my side. I have one more question. There's, it says that I'm supposed to like uh, send this as a bank transfer. Um, are you going to send me an email um, that I should be doing this? Um, because like I need a chaos number, which I don't have yet. Yes, that's a good point. Um, it's also stated on your um, application form. Oh, there was only like a little footnote. I didn't really read that. <laughs> All right, so we are going to get this membership application. Then you will get an email which says, hey, welcome to the club. Here is your current temporary uh, chaos number. You, this chaos number you should be using in your bank transfer. And we're also going to state in the email that where you should be sending that uh, money. And then you're going to get an uh, email with your um, permanent uh, chaos number which is going to be your case number for the future. Das muss so ungefähr, ich weiß es gar nicht, 1998, 1998. Uh, it had to be in 1998, 1999, when the uh, Congress was, was still in, held in Berlin. Um, do you remember that? There was this room with the uh, female hackers, and they put uh, an N64 there with Mario Kart. And before then, I wasn't a gamer at all. But then, like, the whole Congress I spent playing Mario Kart. And ever since then, I buy game consoles to play Mario Kart and nothing else. Um, and so even um, my son, he doesn't understand, like, how can you just use a Switch to play Mario Kart? Anyway. So one of our female hackers, uh, what did uh, our female hackers do this year? Hi, yeah, so Mario Kart, that's, you know, long ago. A few years, we weren't so sure if we still existed anymore, where we had like three female hackers, uh, and now we're even bigger than the Hamburg uh, section of the club. And so we, we really had an influx of membership uh, last year and I think this year as well. And, uh, you know, the future is looking bright. Um, and so since we missed out on the yearly reviews in the past few years, um, yeah, we're going to give you an overview here. So we have uh, 292 uh, Hexen right now, so about 300 on a mailing list. Uh, we have uh, assemblies and, you know, the village at the camp. And we have so-called hats, you know, the hats of um, witches. And so... 
you know, usually you use your connections to get, you know, you to uh, follow through on your goals. And so, um, yeah, this year we asked and, um, uh, and found uh, five new uh, female hackers who wanted to participate, wanted uh, to hold workshops. And so now, you know, we've let this sort of um, this connection system behind and now we just have people want to participate just like that and it works really wonderful. And so, yeah, we have uh, social media, so you s can find us Hexen uh, C or Hexen on Twitter and Mastodon. Um, there's a picture missing. Uh, an, an important picture, but you know, that's, uh, that's why we use a Mac, I guess. Um, so, day four, we have the uh, Hexen year in review, uh, because we like to use uh, euphemisms. Uh, what really happened at the uh, witch trials and uh, femicides um, in the present. And so usually, you, you know, there's this uh, holy trinity between like um, uh, sort of this holy mother image of the woman and the uh, woman as slut, uh, the sort of dichotomy. And um, yeah, what we see here is that um, back when the uh, witch trials were going on, is that when women started, you know, uh, confronting traditional views that they were drawn across uh, a village to, um, you know, punish them. And so uh, for years and years, uh, women at Congress have, you know, spoken up and we still not, haven't reached like a gender parity here. And so during the last few years when uh, lots and lots of female hackers uh, joined us, um, so for example we have a FUCK, um, a German acronym for uh, women and computer stuff, um, and lots of these have um, associations with CCC hack spaces. Um, some have their own feminist hack spaces. And yeah, we'd like to uh, see this map fill up in the future. That would be really nice. Uh, so yeah, that's we don't want to stop there. So 2020, uh, more of everything, more local groups, more representation on the Easter hack. Um, we like camping, so maybe we'll do that. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll have a geek end in October in uh, Stratum in uh, the German city of uh, Brunswick. And um, yeah, um, just join us, um, write a mail to info at hexen.org. Um, and the only way to become a hexa is to talk to another hexa. So please talk to us in person, find our assembly, leave your mail, and you're in. And so an overview of our activities here at Congress, uh, you know, it's day two, and so you can find our far plan, our event schedule on uh, hexen.org. Uh, we have talks, um, we have uh, performances um, about um, including new members into hack spaces, for example. Uh, we have projects like the Seed Exchange, and we have workshops um, held by Hexen, for Hexen, but also for non-Hexens. And we would really like to have uh, gender diversity um, in these workshops. And, you know, it's not just for us. We all want um, the same rights. And, yeah, just, you know, have fun. One moment, one second. Soup, soup Saturdays is mentioned in, in my list here. You did not talk about this. I'm sorry, what? Soup Saturdays. Soup Saturdays. Well, I don't know Soup Saturdays, but we're going to have a celebration of our birthday because we're turning 30. Maybe this was my own personal interest. You have to cook yourself, my honey. 
All right, I'm going to go eat cake now. Bye, have fun. 30 years. Hi. Now I'm confused. Who are you? We're Monika and Herr Acht from Utopia in Göttingen, which is Soup Saturdays. We lose complete overview. This is double printed pages. All right, so now we're going to talk about Soup Saturdays. All right, so... Last year, we were quite active and some of these activities we want to introduce to you. Do we have a new slide? Oh, you have to press, you have to click, okay. All right, us, that means eight hackers and hacks. That we wanted to have a youth group, which is what we did. It's a couple of parents, a couple of non-parents, a couple of students, one person who is a teenager. So we thought about brainstormed and just started a group of teenagers. So we have about 20 young hackers and we want to give them a space where they can learn, where they can understand basic knowledge, but also where they can network. And it works quite well and we have a lot of fun doing it. And we're probably the ones who are actually learning the most. And we brought you one project that uh, Hacht is going to introduce. So we bought, we made a Marte light. As mentors, like what's exciting is that we have very different backgrounds. Like me, for example, I come from hardware side of things more. Julika is more like physics and, and, and data stuff and things like that. And then there's other people who do more software and we learn so much from one another. And what we did with the kids was uh, we built a Marte light. You know these things like um, these big things where you can put into a crate of matter bottles and you can put LED in there and then you can look into it and then you build basically giant pixel displays and so we we built these with the kids and we saw that with the kids we built it from scratch um, we we did all the things that are part of this and then in the end we um, built a matter light and you can like uh, look at it at chaos west like our kids built this so come and check it out it's too late. You just saw uh, how we did the programming. Oh, what's going on? We're jumping. Oh, oh, oh. Hacky Hour. Yeah, okay, so three years ago we, we had this idea that we should have an Hacky Hour. This is not our idea, it comes from Würzburg. And the idea is that uh, scientists and future scientists meet up once a month and they uh, talk to one another and talk about tools and programming languages and help each other out. Uh, to analyze data. So once a month we get together, there's a short uh, talk, and then after that we do a quick uh, hands-on where you can try out tools and programming languages and you can discuss on how to best use them. And in you, I clearly also, like, I mean, seriously, I learn the most in this sort of things. And Hacky Hour, if you uh, want to be interested, find, read up about it and you can build up your own Hacky Hour. We are excited about every Hacky Hour that uh, happens and takes place in Germany, and maybe next yeah, we have a few more. We would love to see that. So, yes, all right. So, the soup Saturdays and the. UDSSR steht für unsere deliziösen Suppensamstagsrezepte. USSR, which in German is like an abbreviation for uh, some sort of like good German soup. Um, so basically what we do is we, we um, make a gigantic pot of soup, uh, lots of greens, you um, turn it around like you cook it and then um, while you cook you discuss interesting subjects such as encryptions, backups, all sorts of other interesting things. Um, before they cut our sound, we also have a hexing group in Göttingen. Started in Halloween this year, we are meeting twice uh, a month, two hours. And uh, who is from Göttingen or close by, nearby, will come talk to me, come to Open Chaos, because we love to grow. And one of our members uh, just founded a library and... Um, you can obviously come and uh, use uh, the books and taste them out. This is our witch. This is uh, the one where that we hang on the wall when we meet uh, so that nobody else enters. So last but not least, uh, we also bought a laser cutter and uh, did a lot of uh, bullshit with it. Um, and this is calibration. Um, 
that was done with a laser cutter. We also did all sorts of stencils. We are from Gutting. Gutting is quite politically active, and uh, we are supporting uh, a lot of different groups. Uh, this is kind of an overview of the stencils that we uh, managed to do in one entire evening. And uh, we use them, obviously, to um, spray onto bags or um, big signs. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of, this sums it up. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. I was just about to say, we have something new. Uh, so five minutes. Uh, we have this uh, guy with the red beard, and when they pass the five minutes, they're just, he's just going to come up and, you know, annoy them and uh, prevent them from keep on speaking, continuing speaking. Um, yeah, so uh, at camp, you know, people were drunk and, come on, turn off your phone. And so they... Uh, chaos now. Uh, so, uh, please tell me that this is more than just uh, you know a drunken idea. <laughs> I don't think anyone was drunk back then. Um, it was so hot in those days. Yeah. Okay. So, um, begin. What do we want to do? We want young people in chaos to connect with each other. And so we want to build a platform for us um, and to have um, to work with uh, youth, with teenagers, and to um, encourage that. So, for example, we're closely connected to um, yeah, people from all over, all regions of the uh, Chaos Computer Club. Our core um, group uh, are people between 14 and 18 years of age. And then of also, you know, uh, 19 to 25 years, and then maybe even people in the late 20s. And so far, we haven't done so much. Uh, so we got together at the uh, camp this year, um, but uh, we also uh, registered the domain chaos.jetzt, so chaos.now in German. Um, and we have a ma matrix chat. Um, and uh, for our traditionalists, uh, we also have an IRC channel. Uh, if you want to join, come to our meeting on day three, so tomorrow at the uh, Wikipaka um, community uh, at uh, 5 p.m. And yeah, we're going to have a short meeting there, maybe have a plan for other stuff. And, um, or otherwise, uh, whenever you feel like it, come to our assembly, chaos.jetzt, um, in the dome at the Wikipaka. Where we hang out. Um, we're planning a geekend in Göttingen, uh, 28th of February till the 1st of March. Um, and yeah, uh, we also have these uh, telephone conferences in our matrix. So uh, join our matrix or join our IRC and uh, work with us. And of course, even the older people here. Uh, could uh, follow us on Twitter or on Mastodon. And yeah, so this is uh, chaos for young people. So if the club does PR, that's uh, usually a big thing. So like, that's more like large scale stuff. So usually it, on a regional scale, we know that we all know that like a lot of times that people are not really interested in this sort of like large scale politics. But obviously, like also in regional PR, we still have to do things, and those are the things that are they're going to share now. Share now. Why are you two people? Well, Mr. Igler has a lot more experience with PR, so that's why he's up here on stage with us. Why am I only here because Faust is about as large as me? Why am I the only one on the slide? Who do you think you are, Holger Klein? Ooh, maybe, well, we don't have time, let's not joke around. So what is Regio PR, which is regional PR? 
Um, well, obviously, there's like our press speakers. And we're not competing with those, like, but we have another focus, and it's another thing that we do. So we're connecting the kind of all the local airfares and the car stress, like all the cars meetups, uh, because they they obviously have to do some sort of public relation work, and and we try to. Everybody knows who did like a little bit of PR ever in their world. Like all of a sudden, there's like a request coming in, or you maybe want to get something to the press, and you just kind of don't know how to do that. And so there was, especially in, in this initiative, Chaos Macht Schule, so Chaos Go School. Um, how do we actually do that? How do we get the word out? What can we do uh, when we want to talk to the press or when the press talks to us? How do we respond? How do we react? And so this is how we came up with this uh, like um, idea of Regio PR. So what can we do? We sat down together with four people. Let's. Uh, we were like, okay, let's try it out. And the final result was that it started in 2018. We're regularly meeting up in Mumble like once a month. And I'm going to quickly um, say that docu.ccc.de enter Regio PR. Yes. Oh, oh, this is great. Sounds there. Okay. We have a project that's ongoing, we have a workshop that we already did in uh, Vienna. You know, us Austrians always like to puff our chest. Um, the first thing that we, major thing that we want to do is go to the uh, European Data Protection Day, where we want to um, have a tool where you can make requests. Uh, for GDPR reasons, um, we're going to publish that, and we're looking forward to uh, participation from everyone, please. Additionally, um, we are um, every first month of the Monday of the month, come to the Mumble server. If you want to join, the more we are, the more the merrier. I'm not going to continue counting. Um, just come join us um, if you uh, want to understand a little bit more about regional work or have experience that you want to contribute. Like We're always welcoming uh, more hands on deck. I have a feeling that uh, you know my colleague starts timing when I start speaking and, you know, so I can steal their time, basically. <laughs> uh, I went to school in the 80s, uh, to high school. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to stay in the 80s. And we had uh, computer science as a lesson. And there was this room having, I think, Apple IIs in there. Uh, we learned Turbo Pascal. Um, you know, learned, quote unquote, and very fast we, um, you know, we found out how to get these things to beep, and then we just let them beep and went to join the girls uh, in the smokers' corner. Um, yeah, and so a school can be quite different, like a computer science education, and so Benny is going to talk about that. Yeah, I have two topics I want to talk about, um, both related to uh, Chaos Machule, um, so the education initiative of the Chaos Computer Club. Um, there's lots of workshops we did at schools, um, but there's also a statement um, um, that we published on uh, the law for digitalization in German schools. Um, yeah, and so uh, in general, uh, Chaos Machschule is an education project from the Chaos Computer Club, and our goal is to uh, yeah, increase um, the majority, the ability to handle technical stuff um, for uh, students. Uh, in we want to, you know, talk about the risks and possibilities of new technologies with um, school students. And as always, we're uh, you know decentralized. Um, we're active in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And even though on you know the sort of uh, federal stage you don't hear a lot about us, uh, on the regional levels we had a lot going on. And so in many cities we have uh, 
Chaos Macht Schule uh, instances, but um, a lot of them uh, have a lack of participants, really. Um, and today we had the uh, Youth Hacker Day. Um, don't worry, don't worry, this all counts towards your time. Uh, we invited uh, hundreds of children to come to Congress and uh, had uh, lots of workshops for them. Um, soldering, um, printing shirts, uh, a small workshop on uh, facial recognition. And we're not just active at schools. Uh, you know, it's just sort of the pseudonym for uh, education. For example, our group in uh, Essen went into universities to work with future teachers. Um, we also worked with environmental groups um, in Berlin. We organized uh, the so-called EduLabs, um, which is a community that deals with um, contemporary techniques of education and um, open educational materials. Um, the uh, CMS group in Mannheim went to a, an event of the uh, BSI, so a German federal agency on informational security, and they even held a talk there. And yeah, and there's really lots and lots of things going on, so the time isn't sufficient to list it all. And we all do this in our free time, and we really um, encounter um, time and personnel constraints a lot of the time. And so, really, I want to encourage all of you to join us, to work with us. We're always looking for new people, and if that's something that sounds um, right to you, then just, you know, go to your next uh, Kaustreff or Erfas or your local, um, your local group, and the most important thing is that, you know, you're <laughs> willing to uh, go to school early in the morning to work with students. Um, yeah, and we really want to educate uh, students about uh, technology um, and with the uh, advent of the internet and the you know uh, popularization of the internet this really has been um, quite a challenge for schools uh, but I have to say really more than 10 years later we still see the same problems uh, on digital literacy in schools. And so us, you know, as a single group, we cannot solve all these problems um, on our own. And what we really need is a change in the uh, educational plans um, and workshops for teachers. That would be really important. And yeah, so we also see ourselves as, you know, someone to uh, a sort of a council. Um, so uh, sometimes we do statements on uh, educational policies. Um, so, for example, in uh, the German state of Hesse, on their uh, digital policies, we had a statement, and I'm going to talk about that now. The uh, uh, so-called digital pact um, was passed this year, and on the federal level, there's going to be 5 billion euros um, provided to schools in Germany for um, digital infrastructure. But because education is not handled on the federal level in Germany, but on the state level, um, there's lots of discussion on how this money should be spent and administered. So Hesse is uh, just one state, and many of you probably don't live there, but um, this problem really applies to all German states. And so uh, Hesse uh, can be seen as a passport toto here. And so we have seven um, points uh, of our criticism and on the educational goals in this uh, pact. And so I'm going to, you know, give you a rough overview of these seven points now. First one is... Um, 
educational goals, um, which don't matter much in the laws that have been passed. So it's always about infrastructure, 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 but uh, there's really no clear definition of what the educational goals underlying all of this are. And so I think this is a you know societal problem, a question that we need to address, because digitalization affects the whole society. And so, how can we take uh, this sort of content that we've always um, taught at school so far and uh, improve that? And how can we um, turn students into competent and versatile users of uh, standard programs and applications? So, um, digital, so-called digital maturity, um, so uh, digital competency, basically, um, uh, that's what we want. So people who understand what happens behind their screen, not just on a technical level. Um, Another important point, um, teachers, uh, according to the uh, German Council on Educational Matters, uh, the Kultusministerkonferenz, um, uh, there the, the still remains this question of like how should this work in praxis. Um, so especially through this so-called digital pact, there's supposed to be new infrastructure, but oftentimes we see that the teachers don't know how they can use this infrastructure and how they can include this into their own um, teaching methods. And so this is not to say that they're incapable um, uh, as sort of a reproach or an accusation. Um, it's really that they don't know any better and they can't know any better. And so this is really a huge deficit that should be addressed. Um, but this isn't part of this digital pact. And we think that's a big problem because that just means we have unused hardware lying around. Um, and in August 2019, we had a statement on ccc.de um, as a press release, uh, 17 pages, uh, read that, and uh, yeah, read that if you're interested in this topic. And um, before I finish, um, a quick uh, resume. So we've shown lots and lots of, um, you know, possibilities of uh, what could be done. But not a lot of that really um, made its way into this law that had been passed. Um, and so we don't think that's a viable option, this law. But what's also important is that um, without um, contemporary um, infrastructure and contemporary um, aspects of education, this digital pact is uh, doomed, basically. So do we want to have Microsoft and Google influence young people, influence how we deal with digital technologies? Or do we want uh, to encourage and enable young people to deal with possibilities and risks of digital technologies? And so basically, we want to enable the whole society to um, influence how this digital change is going to come about. The last time when I talked to Linus Neumann, he had problems to speak because of the lack of sleep. I don't know if you're still here. Linus, are you still here? Oh, I can see you. It's your turn now. You should be coming up. Okay. Who are you again? Good evening. We're going to talk about the data schleuder. Well, we also had our, our like 100 edition. So um, before starting, so we had 100, it, this was the 100th edition, we wanted to do a review, but um, so what happened between 1 and 100, and that didn't really work out, so, uh, well, there was a lot of other subjects that were important, though, to deal with, and so that's why uh, the 100 you can uh, read online really soon. Who read it already? 
after ask. Oh, a few hands. Nice, so people know it, great. So, um, coming soon, I, I kind of wanted, like, I, I wanted it to be possible to be accessed online already, but that didn't really work out. Hopefully, that's going to happen really soon, but it's going to take a few more days. However, in the ex edition 100, instead of a review, we did highly political things that are important to chaos and what is important to us. And as an organ of the chaos computer club, we wanted to portray also what's important to you guys and what's important to the club. So up here, you can see some symbolic examples. So we had the... Uh, uh, incompatibility declaration from Vienna and um, two other examples. So after edition 100, we obviously couldn't stop. So we did shortly before Christmas, kind of like a Christmas present to all of you guys, the edition 101. And this is where we did the review and looking into the past. We finally accomplished that goal. And um, well, basically, do you want to talk about this? Yeah. All right. So... The edition 101 is, we have this beautiful text, uh, um, we just published it, I don't want to take away from your experience of reading it, I'm expecting that a lot of you might not have read it, it just got to you in the mailbox and just in your mailbox before leaving here and the reason that that happened is mainly do what I cared about, getting it printed, getting it sent out, mailed out, so that you can actually receive it. That's a lot of work. I mean, we uh, send it off to a school where they um, put it into the envelopes and um, they have like a, a workshop with, for disabled people and they do all this work for us and you do an amazing job. But it also means it's not really as comfy as a delivery person that you throw money at them and then they just do whatever they want to. We, I actually have to uh, do a lot of uh, work here so that they do the uh, mail via the post office correctly and I don't do this on a daily basis. Those are all excuses. All right, so come on, admit it. All right, check out the notion on the right, bottom right. This is how it works, I have to admit. Um, this is also my fault. We're also learning new things every day. It's a learning process. Um, we are getting the Datenschleuder to you guys, even if it takes a month and a half longer than we expect. But we're very proud that we managed to keep up the frequency um, that we've cut it down to every half year. So if the post uh, plays along. So warm round of applause for that. All right, so what else? So Datenschleuder 101 is published. If you don't have it, come get it at our assembly. Oh, no, you can't get it because it's out of stock. So sorry. Uh, something else that he screwed up on. What do you mean screwed up? There was so much demand. All these airfares that wanted them, they also wanted to have a box. Please send one over. Like, right after printing, we had to tell them, uh, so sorry, we don't have enough. Um, so then not any, not all the airfares got all the editions they wanted. But, um, you know what, little hint, members get one delivered. See this uh, beautiful uh, markup in the map? You can get a membership and you can get one of these mailed to your home. All right, but so that there's going to be a few more, I'm going to have to ask you a few things that please, like, we're interested in what you're interested in. So if you have ideas, if you want to submit something, send us an email at ds at ccc.de and then we'll look into whatever we can do with it. Thank you so much. All right, now that this has completely uh, changed my uh, plan, let's see who's coming up next. Freiburg, Freiburg is uh, entering the stage. And they look like this. Well, it doesn't quite fit, fit the review theme. Um, we actually moved two years ago. Uh, we ha had a lot of luck to get rooms in the Mietzhaut Syndicate. Uh, great for moving hackerspaces. Look at local uh, housing projects. 
and that's just how it is with a move. It's not completely finished after a year. So, yeah, that's a unit of BER years, so the Berlin airport. <coughs> we have uh, made a request for uh, fiber, and I have good news for Freiburg. The cable and the uh, fiber is now uh, available, but Telekom apparently has to put in an SAP fax. Okay, so we, we will have a fiber connection soon, great. And uh, except for that, there's not, not much happening in Freiburg all the time. Um, the Hackspace is booting. We are growing in terms of uh, technology and have a lot of fun with it. Uh, we do radio. We did have a small retro gaming night. I can uh, Mario Kart is, is one of our standards, so that may be something for you, Holger. Yeah, you, so maybe you can just join us. We we also have showers. Well, I, I will check if you need one in a second. Uh, we we also have washing machines. So just okay. So I'll continue eating then. Right. So we have uh, a central location. We have moved uh, because the size and uh, location was great. And I can really recommend that to everyone. It so about a year, there's going to be problems because that's how long the moving takes. And we have grown in membership because we are very close to the center. Um, just three minutes from the center, come come visit us if you are uh, visiting the south or anything on vacation. So I have another thing. Um, it's a request. Uh, many of you have, 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 may have met the 5G people. This is a very uh, popular topic in Freiburg and it's kind of bizarre sometimes. So uh, we are providing this now. It's a 5G detox resilient craft beer. You can also have it as a chunk. But in all uh, honesty, we think it's very important to uh, look at all these. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. People are uh, talking about things that are not accurate in terms of technology, and we have the uh, power to uh, move uh, that along. There's wavies also in uh, mixed up with uh, digital education, and we would like that to keep kept to be kept separate, uh, to not uh, mix that up with uh, fear of uh, radio frequency. And uh, as you can see, we also like brewing. This is craft beer brewed in the hack space. Uh, come to us and then you will get something against your fear of 5G. Thank you. So by now I have an overview over my papers. So I will tell you, do not print double-sided because you lose your overview or at least put page numbers. This is Daria, says my piece of paper. Uh, come again. I didn't understand you. And he says, oh, this is Daria. Are you Daria? And she says, yes, this is Daria. Daria from Chaos Pot will tell us about Chaos Pot. Hi. I'm Daria from Essen and I'm going to tell you about what we did 2019 in Essen. First of all, we grew. So last year, oh this year, we cracked the 100 member mark. And we were, were very happy about this. So next year at our 10th anniversary we can celebrate that. 
So, und jetzt komme ich dazu, was so wir now, letztes Jahr gemacht haben, beziehungsweise what we did last year, or this year, we did a lot with Chaos Snakes School. Wir haben verschiedene Vorträge und Workshops an Universitäten und Schulen gehalten und haben auch am um, Maus Türöffner Tag teilgenommen. So, uh, yeah, we did, we did a lot of talks and we did the Maus Open, open Doors uh, Day and worked with kids and you, you young people creating the LED lightning stars and lightning trees that you see here. And then we also, in February, we, uh, we participated, no, we created the Hack and Pot again conference. So next year we also will uh, organize this and would be very happy if we saw one or two of your faces there. Talk to us if you feel like coming to us. That was fast. But now, we have the previously um, prepared Neumann. will give us an overview over two topics that the CCC thought about a lot this year. First is Olabini. Olabini, a human who had the wrong friends and is therefore in jail. And, and so that Dinos doesn't have to talk about only bad things. Uh, is, is he talking about fusion and that the fusion is staying this year? I don't know what would you, but I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to skip fusion. It's for young people who take drugs and you don't want to go to a public uh, mobile toilet. And then, then comes this policeman and is trying to improve, uh, impart law and order. And so I tried to get a ticket at the last, at the last second to defend the fusion, but it was good. Okay. So some of you may have seen that in Ecuador there has been political change, and not only Julian Assange is has been thrown out of um, the em embassy, but also another case, Ola Bini, a Swedish person, was taken in, co in custody, who lives, who has been living in the country for 13 years, and he's been he's being held with. Uh, things that are accused with things that they don't really explain, but they're afraid of him because he's a computer programmer, programmer and he's in a very weird situation where the ju judicial ways of escaping is, uh, is blocked for him. And so human rights organizations are clear on the fact that this is not okay, and we are, among others, more uh, uh, again and again trying to shine a spotlight on this. This guy doesn't have any thing that is um, that is like being said about him he's just he's just held in jail without any uh, any real explanation we also talked about this in at camp and it's very important that we keep these in our view field so we can look at them so it's very important for me to look to, uh, to tell you about this again in the context of this rear in review Of course, every year we deal with attacks on our freedom. I, don't, I can't, I can't tell, tell exactly, but it probably was in on, around Easter. I got a call from Culture Cosmos uh, who saw an attack on the Fusion Festival by weird requirements regarding the security concepts of this festival. And they said, you guys from the CCC, you're doing these things and the, the work with the press, and could you maybe help us uh, working with the press about this uh, attack that we have and so that we can continue with the festivals. And so the police uh, trying to stop the, the festival would, uh, would be blocked. So I thought to myself, you can't always win. Uh, CCC press work is always winning. So I thought, Maybe I gotta take some risks. So let's do press work for fusion. And a huge conspiracy uh, opened itself that some AFD people and some attackers, some some violent people apparently tried to. Oh, like people said, they would try to save the fusion with water cannons or cool it, I guess. But we had a talk on the fusion festival itself where Stefan Pelzer had a talk at uh, the camp. And I would recommend you 
to watch this. Uh, and so now we are at, at the camp, and SMTV, SMTW will tell you all about the camp. Hi, good evening. Holger, are you sufficiently confused that the same person is back on stage again? And Holger is, okay, now I'm fine. How was camp? I wasn't there because it's only every four years. So in the week where it started, I put work that I couldn't move. So tell me what I missed. Uh, and FTW says, uh, okay, like, you know, you know the next date already. So who was at camp this year? Look at this. Look at this on the on the screen. This image. It's very colorful. So camp is. You have 5,000 hackers on a field. So camping for electronic geeks and dust. Uh, C3 Dust likes this. Uh, apart from some dust problems, there was a huge another problem. This camp was too short. I don't have any other criticisms. Everything else was absolutely fantastic. Camping and computers, it actually works way more, way better than you would think. So I can ha very much recommend it. In two years, there's other camps outside of Germany, so maybe you could go there and like, like have a taste. Infrastructure-wise, infrastructure worked perfectly. The whole event was very cuddly and cozy. You could just walk around all day. Uh, I lost my overview on, on what all, all the all the different fantastic things were. I was working a lot with village organization. So there were I don't know how many groups there were. There were too many, and from all corners and countries of Germany and outside of Germany, people came to this huge happening and festival. So. Big recommendation to have a look at this if you can deal with sleeping outside or a motorhome. Who brought this thing, Holgi says? This little cart that's played different music depending on its location in the in the festival. So you could troll people if you p p put it like next to some tents and then leave. I don't know who did this, but it was wonderful. So it was like controlled by GPS and that gave it different music. There were so many projects of this kind, but we have a specialist for the biggest and most interesting of these um, of these projects, the cardio badge. So I want to in introduce Geo. He can tell you all about it. Okay, yes. After the very successful batches in 2011 and 2015, we knew we needed something great um, and, inno and innovative for the camp. This is um, a badge that you can wear as a clock around your wrist and you can measure your EKG if you want. Um, so you can see that it's kind of not very relaxing to be in front of you all now. And there's also like a pressure measure device so you can see how high up you are. And there's a gyro sensor in there that you can use for useful stuff or not. You can make light paintings with the LEDs. There's a 3D magnetic sensor in there. And all of these apps are written in Python, so it's quite easy to have to this interface. So here we have Micromarble, which shows that um, even it's quite even though it's quite it's easy, you can still do quite great things with it. If Python isn't enough for you, you can you can use C and do these kind of simulations. There's an additional companion app that you can um, install on your smartphone, where you can like um, basically send data over. There's a couple of cases that has happened with like 3D printing and laser cutting. The CPU is quite interesting because it's a two dual core um, modern CPU that uses Python or MicroPython. And it was really very current and very up to date. That was even a problem. It should be a, um, there should be a review. So we, I have a timeline. In 35C3, we first thought of having something that is a variable on your arm. And the, these are the first prototypes. 
als man dann wusste, wie groß es ungefähr werden sollte. When we knew how big we wanted it to be, we thought about what should be in there. And um, we started the we started with the technical stuff. And the um, the biggest question was, how do we start? How can you wear this? And we kind of agreed on a wristband, the first prototypes from the lower board, which we call fundamental, was done in April, and then we presented it at Easter Hack. At the end of April, you could start using the firmware. Um, you could start, so they were starting um, building prototypes actually, and we were quite surprised to find out that it worked quite well. Something that happened also, as well, was the first layout of the um, harmonic board, so the topper board, top board, and then we did some sort of um, crowdfunding for the camp, and we had so many people apply and like pay for it. Um, we were able to um, give badges to every camp participant, even if they did not pay money for it, because so many people donated to us. Endgültigen, fertigen, äh, fertig designed. The done boards were um, ordered in June. This was the second design for the harmonic board, and that was done, and that actually worked. Uh, and we also, we also ordered it at the beginning of July. And then we actually had to do some stuff um, in hand, like uh, by hand, like the wristbands. And we also had to um, solder the displays on there by hand. And then we had this problem with the Typhoon, because these um, very modern, up-to-date CPUs were still in Taiwan at this point. And they couldn't start because um, there was a typhoon, and that was one week before camp. And then we had to read these instructions, or finish these instructions, and then um, in the last days before the camp, and even some of them, while camp was um, running already, we had to actually finish the CPUs and stuff and um, flash them with Seekit and package them up. And then we, ha we, could, we were able to give them out after final um, preparations. We were able to um, give a badge to everyone at camp. And now a Und ein Applause, Applause den Talks heißt immer, ich for everyone. And I have an one, mid, one extra minute. We have the cardio assembly at 363. You can um, go there, especially if you helped us. We also have some um, additional sets for stuff that you could do. And if you've did, done anything amazing, we have um, tomorrow. <laughs> we, tomorrow we have um, a competition. So if you did something great, you can go tomorrow before 6 p.m. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and goodbye. Oh, you've stolen the clicker. Okay, did you get it back? All right, he stole the clicker. All right, so you should notice that something's wrong with your notes. THM. Yeah, THM is correct, but uh, originally Martin was planned to be up uh, with me here, but uh, he is not able to come. Uh, my voice is trying to do the same thing, so she's failing as well. But next slide, please. All right. I'm here to talk about not the largest project, but the largest village on the camp, the Three-Headed Monkeys, THM. And I'm here to introduce four teams that work together there. Uh, Entropia, Cardos, the Folgers crew and the CCB. And I know that not a lot of you were there, but you've really missed something. We, we built a large village with its own stage, uh, a bar which uh, doubled as a boat, a workshop tent, and we just created an event inside the event. It was important for us to make it a beautiful place. 
uh, that we can uh, we, we've got our own worker crew there they're going to talk about what they did what they built uh, but we also organized the village from video bar uh, sound we, we also made food for us uh, it was a lot of work um, but it was great because we wanted to use the camp that we love to do the thing that we wanted to do the way we want to do it and to have more self-organization, more decentralization in the organization of these events. So we didn't start with zero. There was the BER in the last camp, which uh, was partly organized by us, OYO, on, on this Congress. Uh, but also other examples like Chaos West, which uh, tried to do decentralized organization and taking over stages. And we see it on this Congress. It's something that uh, it's growing more and more, and that's what we're welcoming. And all of these teams that have been doing uh, events uh, since forever, we wanted to do something like Entropia wanted to do their birthday, we wanted to do the BAR succession, uh, OIO wanted to come, but we all knew it's a lot of work. We weren't sure if we were able to make it. Resource exhaustion is a problem for us as well. Um, so... We were talking, hey, what are you doing? Are you doing something? Yeah. All right, yes, uh, but maybe. And we fin uh, figured out we could do something together. Uh, we, we took a phone call in January together, and so we said, yes, we're doing it, and we're doing it really big. Um, so we became the three-headed monkey crew. I'm not trying to uh, explain where the name is coming from. This would be two, ten additional minutes alone. But it was great. It was colorful. And for us, we, we all grew with it. We all didn't start with zero. We have all our skills, our experiences. And we um, removed the borders between these groups. There wasn't Cardos, CCC, uh, Entropia. It was just one crew. And everybody brought what they wanted to bring. And we built one great thing that you can't imagine, probably, if you haven't been there. Uh, a lot of the things you could, if you've been there, you could have seen many of, the, of that, not, not all of it. And so I'm now heading out over to our build crew, and they are going to tell you how to build these large wooden structures. That's a story of its own. Hey, my name is Vanessa. I'm from Cardus, and we are going to tell you about building. So the crew. The, the logo of the Folgas crew up there, we, we've made this up just half an hour ago. It's very nicely designed. Uh, I think Kados almost uh, seems a bit unfunny. Uh, let's talk about, about Kados. We are in the OIO space at Congress, which we uh, also initiated, it's just like at camp. And Kados, some of you probably know it or have heard about it. We are... Um, there's a mobile hospital in Syria and it's often uh, seen as a humanitarian aid organization, but it's also uh, a hackerspace. We also have a hackerspace uh, in, in Berlin, a makerspace, and it's also a place to meet people who are uh, supporting us. A lot of them are, have been involved with building as well and with camp. Uh, so thanks a lot to you uh, for spending that much of your free time with us. All right, my name is Störter and I will uh, represent Vollgas Crew. Uh, we thought it would be great if we wouldn't be just be doing computer stuff, but also wood construction. And we have built the OIO, so this time it's CCL1, Kidspace, uh, here Entropia has, and 
At camp, it started, we've uh, made a, put a lot of thought into it, used CAD software to plan it, and then we realized, well, this, uh, <laughs> this sketch has to, to suffice, and it turned out it did. Uh, we, we then realized we don't have money or material, so we uh, took a truck and then we uh, went to all the containers in, in Brandenburg and eBay and we uh, were able to get some wood. And the first try is how could it look like? We're no, not, not great at planning, as you can probably tell. And it ended up working, uh, funny enough, and we moved it to the space and then built upon that. So this is how we continued. And do you want something? No, the, the lights, for example, they weren't planned. It was just spontaneously added. People uh, came together and, and, and put the lights there. And uh, a lot of people were at uh, camp, and uh, you, you may recognize this great bar now, and you may have drank Perlenbacher with us. So this is our small uh, uh, hut, pub for the crew, uh, with all this uh, canned beer. Um, and you can see the <laughs> ratio between beer and food, um, and this brought us together, certainly. And we found out that you can buy uh, this stuff uh, uh, with, with a palette at Lidl, but then you have to move it uh, uh, along the, the, the cash register, so that you can't just bring it out uh, to the back exit. And uh, after camp, they... Uh, changed the uh, logo of uh, Perlenbacher, so maybe they were able to uh, pay a design person after that. Okay, and then there's also regulations for building, so stuff must not be higher than five meters, but you can build it and then uh, add the 12 meter, uh, <laughs> uh, the 12 meter masts uh, after the uh, regulation has been verified. Okay, this is uh, where you can see the lighthouse, where you can see uh, find Lacados. We have uh, rebuilt the space here at uh, 3633. Please come and look at all our projects. This was the end uh, where we found all the projectors and everything worked and wasn't broken and then it was finished. But this is not the end. Uh, we're not going to trash all of it. That would be sad. If, if you, we, we just remove the old wood on the side and the rest we uh, brought into a container of the, the, the trash and then we uh, were driving like eight times back to Leerz where we uh, built the safe harbor space at Fusion where you are also very much welcome. And that's uh, about the end of our talk. Cheers. So we saw a lot about Entropia on the stage, so let's continue with the Entropia festival. So they, don't, they didn't only take part in the three-headed monkey, but they also do something that is very personal to me and makes me very happy, which is the Goulash Programming Night. I love it. Hello. Yes. Hi, I am Martin for the purposes of this event, and this is Caro. We want to tell you a little bit about the Gulasch Programming Night, the GPN. It is from it is an event in Karlsruhe, which is usually being forgotten in the uh, year in review. So this year we had 2,000 um, uh, people coming there. We had uh, telephones, we had kids, we had 42 kilos of waffle. Uh, for 84 telegrams, sold 85 snacks and 1,500 buns. We had we sold 17,000 drinks. We had 440 kilograms of sugar and four kilo, six kilograms of coriander, 2,600 uh, kilograms of waffles, and three tons of gulash. 
Lots of network ports, network ports, 1.7 kilometers of, of fiber optic cable, and a lot of clients, clients in the Wi-Fi. Bye. Wait, hang on. Wait, so things actually happened. Okay, we start with the bad stuff. So some of our, some of our people, of our visitors, were uh, assaulted in a homophobic fashion by the pe person controlling their tickets which is the worst because we had a cooperation with the public transport system and there was the CSD in Karlsruhe. These uh, ticket controlling people didn't really know what, what would hit them because the person who, the person had 2,000 followers on Twitter and this escalated so much that there was a spontaneous demonstration because the office of this, of this company was just right across the street and they didn't really count on that. And then there was a huge blue cat before the event. And a huge big blue cat is, of course, something for the police, who asks, wait, there's a cat? What's going on there? We, we uh, answered, no, we, we don't see any cat. The cat's gone. A little bit after, <laughs> the, the cat was back, but with police protection. But then, what happened then, we cannot tell you for legal reasons, but there's other options. We wanted to ask what was happening there, so someone asked the government to this platform from the Freedom of Information equivalent in Germany, and this is the answer. We are going to, going to quote a little bit from that. We asked why, why is this cat standing there? And the, the, the states of Baden-Württemberg said they, had a, they wanted to have a campaign and they asked people and it, it turns out that like, people don't feel informed about digitalization. So the solution was to put a blue cat in front of a museum. And this is explained by being the cat, the cat being the, uh, the, the logo of the digitalization, like see cat content because people like cats, right? So we asked, how, what does the cat cost? And the whole campaign, 2.2 million euros. The cat, 6,000 euros. <laughs> then the cat was vandalized with this, uh, with this thing. So we asked, uh, did the cat ha was the cat hunger, hungry? So they re replied, our big blue cat does not does not uh, need any food, it just needs love and air. So at the, uh, as the digitalization representative, felt she, she felt very good with the visitors of, of uh, GPN, even though she doesn't eat goulash or it. Ever since GPN, we know that evacuation and the smoke removal uh, <laughs> systems work really well. GPN 24 is 21st of May uh, 2020, 2020, and we bought the goulash making cannon, so it now belongs to us. Okay, enough Karlsruhe. Ten years ago, I was sitting on a stage at the CCC as well, and there we talked about Mr. MCD in Darmstadt. And back then, we... We talked to um, then Justice Minister um, Brigitte Zypris and we tried to make her change her mind, but it didn't work. And what also didn't change, actually, is that the Mieter rhein main chaos ha days happened. Now, again, ich, I'm Nico, and once again, I drew the short straw, so I need to be on the stage for Mr. MCD. And if you're interested in the Padaloon um, Zypris event back then, you can find it on Google. And Mr. MCD is now 15 years old or something, if you don't know it. Um, I'm sure all of you have been there before. It's a regional 
chaos meeting with about 700 people, mostly in da always in Darmstadt, mostly at the Technical University of Darmstadt. And we have a kind of motto each year. 2019, it was board games. So, of course, we had um, dice, inflatable dice. And if, when you, if, you're, if you were a participant, you, um, you got a card game to play, um, and the speakers also got some board game related merch, basically. We cannot tell you the motto for next year. Because we really haven't decided yet, but I would be very glad to see you there. 2019 was great, not only because of the motto, but because we had great weather. It was in September, and that's better weather than the Congress, but sometimes it's also already really cold. Um, so if it's not cold, we have a great um, we have great grounds, and you can go there. Um, and if you, what I really want to tell you about is that we don't have such a big event in not in Karlsruhe and also not in Darmstadt, but these um, small events with less than 2,000 um, people is really nice. Um, the advantage of the Mr. MCD is that um, we have people basically presenting their research that they will then present at the Congress. So we often have work in progress, and that's really um, interesting. Uh, so I would be very glad if you came to us or to GPN or to all of them. If you're interesting and so that you have an opportunity to do, we're happy to have you in 2020. It's happening from September 4th to September 6th. This is the first weekend in September. And yeah. Maybe you will get Holger to attend as well. You need to. You just need to ask. I almost yes, never say no, and afterwards I always say, why? Um, unfortunately, SPD does not have. Unfortunately, the um, Minister of Justice is not Brigitte Zypras at the moment, so we probably won't be able to get her to attend. Yeah. Thank you. And now for something completely different, Austria. In Austria, there is also chaos happen, and Skoda is going to tell us about uh, C3 Vienna. Hi. We had the honor to host the Easter hack. Uh, you have seen the merch earlier. Fabos says, worn a t-shirt. This is how the hoodie looks. If you haven't been there and want to buy merch, you can order it. So you can, oh, so you can pretend like you have been there. Oh, but, but it's going to be a lot more expensive. No. Oh, well, let's talk afterwards. Okay, one of the coolest uh, things, uh, there's 600 nerds, one Wolpertinger. Uh, it was a federally 3D printed project. It's about one meters, meter large. Um, yeah, we normally put a banana for scale, but we left it out this time. Uh, the whole event was happening at TU Wien, at TU Vienna. Uh, two large uh, halls, an interior area to uh, a karaoke party even, uh, which I have heard is very was very great, but I was drunken, so I didn't uh, didn't uh, go there. And what we are also doing is Privacy Week now for the fourth time. It was this time. The, the, the motto was Privat Euda. So, Euda as a suffix in Vienna, you may know it, uh, you can add it to anything, uh, you can add it in all of all, all the colors and variants, and it can be really great, like Congress Euda. And some people can even do it more uh, better than I, because I'm not originally from Vienna, so I'm not really entitled to say it. So anyways, these two events are the big things that happened in Vienna. We also have Chaos Machtschule, Chaos at School. 
and the privacy week is going to happen again next year, the, probably at the end of October, but not 100% uh, sure will be announced. And that's that. Thanks a lot. Come visit us. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Uh, except that you can order these T-shirts and hoodies. We also have a small set of Easter egg uh, mugs. Um, and they're available at the assembly, at our assembly. Just go out the door, just on the left-hand side of the dome, the coffee house. See you there. Thanks. So, we ha were a bit afraid at the beginning and the first uh, took a lot more than five minutes, but it looks like we are able to uh, finish on time. There's not much left, but Frank Rieger is left and he's going to talk about digital sovereignty. He's not the last one. Okay, hi. I want to we very quickly, quickly report what happened in the Berlin lobby bubble. So we try to to pump knowledge into politics and know that. Then everyone is like, you see it in the Bild newspaper. And the most important topic this year was digital sover sovereignty in the context of this whole Huawei problem. The situa situation is the Huawei panic where the Chinese will all like inf infiltrate us if they build our 5G network that was built by the politics but it doesn't have a lot of stuff to do with reality. If you look at these things more clearly then you see that this has a lot of bugs with all the uh, people who make these. So it doesn't even, <laughs> you don't even need to put in the back door because it has so many bugs. So, but in parallel, parallel is the security IT law 2.0, where they want to have IT security in the law with all the responsibilities. The problem with that is that next to some good starts, also the Ministry for the Inner Interior uh, also add, added a make a wish part with just a lot of basic nonsense that doesn't have anything to do with IT security but public security and that would lead to IT security would be reduced for example they try to um, ban anonymizers or the like the make it illegal to to use or present these anonymizing services and we see these these problems where instead of solutions we have destructions and so at the end people have no knowledge at all but it's clearly to see that the impacts from the uh, from the economy uh, and the impacts of the, of the economy were, were seen so some small and medium uh, businesses but also cities and hospitals were hit all of those are being shut down because they opened an email attachment that opened the, and <laughs> went into their system and people are starting to realize that that just like banning anonymization is not the right strategy to fight against it, but they have to actually deal with IT security. So suddenly we have a lot of hearings official hearings and discussions of uh, fractions for, for like finding an opinion and background talks where people are, where we, where we just pe talk to people and try to improve their knowledge, which is kind of our task in this whole game. And so we spend a lot of time on that just to impart some more no basic knowledge of that field, not always uh, successfully. Some, like the Atlantic Bridge is the US, uh, US American uh, lobby, um, is kind of our opponent in this, and they try to, the, the Huawei exception thing, they try to push this very hard. And they believe that if they say Huawei often enough, then they can dominate the debate. Uh, but it's kind of annoying when their bosses kind of start the topic of, t of technology sovereignty by, by sanctions against Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline 
They might have to s stop the ref refinery in Suez, which has a U.S.-American firmware, but that belongs to the Russians. So you have the problem that there's no real allies in technological, technology, technological sovereignty, so you have to take this serious. So we say in the Huawei debate, it doesn't really matter where it comes from, from the Americans, from the Chinese, from the Swedes, from the Germans, but they all have to open their source. They all have to find the security standards. And only if we deal with everyone in the same way, we can find some kind of security. And slowly this idea is, is taking ground and certain certain uh, agencies already agree with this. But in politics, they're kind of desperate because uh, widespread technological sovereignty she doesn't seem to be reachable. So this is a problem for next, that's going to be interesting next year. But there is interest in all of the parties in trying to find solutions. What, uh, so you can see that even if you are the Chaos Computer, Computer Club being in, invited by even the conservative parties, which usually never ha happens, but they are so desperate that sometimes they actually ask us. Okay, shortly our demands that we are trying to spread. So we're trying from the start. We say like everyone who learns programming in Germany should learn uh, safe programming, and that should be financed by the state for all uh, educational institutions, so you can use it very easily because everyone is using it. We want uh, update cycle security. Um, so we want uh, if you buy a fridge that updates itself by the cloud, um, you should like you should know in, in advance like how how many times is it being updated and how long is the update cycle before the updates just stop. And also we want if these devices, if they are cloud dependent and have vulnerabilities by because of that, we want a seal on that. Like um, you know, like a traffic light on the side of a of a fridge. This idea is also very interesting to people. So we might have find a chance to push through with this, but we need a lot more support with this. Another thing we, we, we try to push for a long time is going away from the problems that we oh. Okay, I have, not, I have two points left. So the huge research institutions and security projects, they never come to fruition, really. They just like being finan financed by like, you know, 50 millions go somewhere and then they just don't reach anything. They don't reach the economy. Many small projects, more startups. And if they work and if they have a security focus, then you can finance them some more. So we have to do a lot of to, to do here as well, but maybe we can reach it. Another thing is the security standards that are uh, by per default in various parts of the industry. We want to create those and we want to keep them dynamic, not uh, like, uh, oh yeah, this router is secure because it doesn't catch fire, but a dynamic system that evaluates, that's being evaluated like a standard every two, three months. And if you are not uh, adhering to that system, you are officially unsafe and this should give companies the drive to amortize uh, to the cost to keep a device secure into the planning of the device. And our evergreen is the <coughs> uh, split of the, minist the Ministry of the Interior and the Ministry for Security, uh, for Internet Security, so you don't have a mixture of loyalties and they can then, the Ministry for Internet Security can can be can, can can concentrate on their task. So this is going to be very exciting, and I'm going to keep you up to date what is happening. Thank you. Okay. We call it day two. Outside today is December 28, 2019, and the Süddeutsche Zeitung, a huge mass media in Germany found out that um, security experts from the CCC fa have found, um, have analyzed 28 surveillance, um, surveillance devices and found out that they're not actually safe. So Linus will tell us. I was at a f music festival and I basically did press work there. And then there was a phone call. And Ulf Burmeier um, 
Was it? And, Ulf, and I asked Ulf, what can I do against you? Could you not maybe look at like malware? Do you have like, do you, are you wearing an aluminum uh, hat? What do you think it's hap is happening? Why? I think there's a stage Trojan. Uh, is the aluminum hat great? No, real. I think it was used in Turkey against oppositionals. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that he said, especially because we're not allowed to export stuff there, like military stuff. So I would like to know who made it, who made this and where. And then I called Torsten, Torsten Schröder. Torsten, I know you're busy, I'm sorry. But we need to take a look at a state Trojan. It's been a while since CCC did this. In 2011, CCC destroyed the German Digitas state Trojan. And there was also another one, Finnfischer Finnspei. So we looked at a couple of samples. Some GFF looked at something and they wanted us to verify their analysis. And I kind of didn't really, ca I kind of didn't really expect Torsten to be to really work that much. So if we want to make sure that this is Finspy, then we cannot only look at one other Finspy sample. I would like to have all of the Finspy sample. So we looked at 28 of these samples. Some friendships, we needed to kind of use some of our relationships for that. But Torsten really is really conscientious and he really wanted to do that. And then for a while it took a lot longer than it did than we expected for a couple of months. So I told him, you need to give a presentation tomorrow um, just to make sure that we're done. So tomorrow, Torsten Schröder and someone else, Ulf, um, will be giving a talk about this analysis. And I do not want to um, show the results now, but we can show that this state tr Trojan was only built in 2016 because it uses specific compilers and libraries are linked there. And of the 28 samples we looked at, we're very sure that they're from Fitzby. And now we want to now know how the um, federal federal law federal uh, how the basically federal police in Germany and the um, state polices will be um, able to explain how they man how this company managed to export this to Turkey which is not allowed are there still people with these aluminum hats walking around there's a lot of are there people from these um, from these offices walking around here. Did you ask them? Yes, I hope so. Uh, we have actually published a um, press notice today and we said that we analyzed all these 28 um, samples. They're all published on GitHub. And did I not, did I not mention that? Yeah, we have them all on GitHub and we would be happy if other people would check our analysis. I'm sure you can find even more stuff. And we would mostly prefer if people from the um, federal police office also do this because we assume that they have samples that we don't because they actually bought the this from Finn Fischer. So we would really like you to um, be a wit witness in this um, court trial because they have bought this. Okay, thank you. Have fun analyzing, have fun at Congress. I wouldn't have thought 
hast du gar nicht. Ach, hast du, hast du was vorbereitet für, für den Schlussakkord? Nee, überhaupt nicht. Ich I haven't uh, prepared anything for the last minutes. Because I was so scared. Uh, two hours before the, this uh, event, I didn't even know what we were doing. And then, uh, it's, uh, then they said, well, 30 people, everyone, five minutes. Well, you, you, you did well. And you got a weapon. I'm a bit... <laughs> so... Uh, so what, what 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 did stick? You ha had had uh, double-sided notes. And <laughs> they were all thinking about. And I was thinking about whether they all just trolling me. Yeah. So I, I'm going to talk uh, very shortly in the end. Uh, there was the first try to uh, have the CCC year in review decentralized. Uh, we are trying to make this a bit less chaotic in 2020, and we will print one-sided. And we will save resources, of course. What, what's the, 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 the Congress motto? I forgot. Resource. Some, something, something's broken. <laughs> right. So we had chaos at school. We had MRMCD. We did have. Where do we start? Let's start at the top. So chaos yet. We did have chaos at school. We had. He was a bit disappointed. I think he had prepared more. And well, he he really used his five minutes well. We did have fusion. Uh, I'm a bit sad that I didn't go there. Well, I, I was uh, at camp for two days. Yeah, I, I, I arrived very late on, on Friday because I had to work and I didn't know what camp was. And uh, at Saturday on, on midday, uh, there's wine tasting, uh, a friend from Switzerland. So I stayed till Monday. <laughs> All right, so do we finish up? A big round of applause for everyone who was here, for Holgi, who did well.